Let's begin at the beginning. Um, were you born into a scientific household? Yes, I think I was. Um, on both sides? But my mother was, she, um, she did a degree in it's called natural sciences in Cambridge, but um, she didn't pers pursue it. In her generation, women right. typically didn't, unless they got married, didn't pursue She married a scientist. She, but well, she well didn't my father was a, he was an engineer. Uh -huh. um, he was, he's, he started his career in the Navy, but he, he left the Navy about the time he got married. And then he worked um, in the, the physiology lab in Cambridge. So he was, um, he would build their experiment, the, the apparatus and things for experiments. So an inclination to the natural sciences, but, but as an engineer, uh, yes. building their, the equipment yeah. they needed, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Yeah. Now um, he, he, he was working with, I think well-known people in the area, like Hodgkin and Huxley, the, the founders of yes. um, that area of understanding the nervous system, as far as I understand. So. Because um, <laughs> I'm at the moment interested in the biography <laughs> of your origin. I, I'm wondering what your parents' temperaments were like. Um, very equable, I think, is that the right word? <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> the, the, I mean, um, well, I, I really, I suppose I'm, I'm looking for influences. So I'm, I'm wondering whether they are, at least as parents, particularly interested in, in your future, those in, uh, you have siblings, I believe. Yes, we have the four. There are four of, of you. So are, are they, are there books everywhere? Are they pushing you? Are they uh, letting you be um, to develop your own interests? The first and third, but not really the second. They uh -huh. never really pushed us. There were books, um, well, the, uh, plenty, plentiful supplies of books, but yeah. also of other. Anyway, the, definitely they were. They let us develop our own interests. That was maybe the right. Um, <coughs> um, what the tended to be, I mean, even more conspicuous than books would be, I don't know, various, I'm not quite sure how to describe it, projects. My father always had many projects yes. he was doing in the house, things yes, he was building. Yes, no, he, that's he exactly built, the kind of thing I'm he, wondering. He built model aeroplanes, but he would say he would mend things in the house, and in general he, um, so a lot of activity and, yes interest in doing different things. And it feels like the sort of thing I might guess an engineer yeah. would, would, would be interested in. So you're, um, you're the third of four, um, all boys, all girls, a mixture. Three boys and a girl. So three, three boys and a girl, yes, that's sister's right. sister's older. Yes, yeah. that's right. Um, and again, you, you don't, uh, expectations were not severe. In, in other words, were you in, if you were interested in whatever you were interested in, they would support it, that sort of thing. Um, I think, I mean, there's some underlying expectations All right, there, please. but they weren't, it wasn't, they weren't, in the small scale, they were not particularly. Right. It wasn't cinematic. They weren't, you weren't bent over your desk and with no. them standing over you saying no. study hard. No, but it was generally expected that somehow one would do that. Was there, um, I know you're going to move as a family at some point and that will be important to, to look at, but right now in Cambridge um, as a family, uh, is the schooling available to you good? Is it in any direction? Is it particularly, um, is it? A public school? Is it a uh, uh, state school? What's oh, it's very, it was what's called a a prep school, a yeah, prep which school. is a the, prep the school feeder is schools for right. public schools. So, so go up to thirteen. So uh, that uh, it follows the academic expectations. Yeah, and, and it, so it, it, which was very good. I, mean, I think I learned, in a sense, most things I know. I learned. <laughs> I learned. Really, there. at that, I, at I, that I, stage. I, I, it was it was a very 
um, can I find in your life a mentor yet at this, I suppose it's, I think it's 12 you, you move as a family. So mm -hmm. up till 12, is there, is there somebody at school that is taking an interest, that's sending you in any direction? Not some. Um, not specifically. I, I was actually most interested in history at that time. Were you? So, yeah. Well, that's sensible the, of you. The, <laughs> the, the history schoolmasters um, were keen on me, but but, uh, but um, there's, there's no specific. No, no push. No, no specific uh, um, direction set yet. Mm. Uh, you know, again, it's part of the adventure of the people I've had the privilege of interviewing that at a certain point, somebody gets them or sends them somewhere. But I'm, we haven't reached that point yet in your life. Um, are you seen as um, particularly clever? It's an odd question, but or um, you're a good student among good students, that sort of thing. I think maybe something between the two. I was not, okay. not I think I was, yeah, because I used to do well in, but not, I wasn't, neither, neither did I do extraordinarily well, nor was I extraordinarily hard working. So I didn't, <laughs> I didn't do, Understood. I didn't, yeah. I didn't do, but, but, Those are but, the elements yeah, they, they, uh, that they make were, the difference. Um, so yeah. I'm going to get you to another point where maybe there's something, um, well, dramatic is too strong a word, but something significant happening. So the family moves. Mm -hmm. Why? Because my father got a different job. Um, but actually, it was working with some of the same people, but... Um, Rather than working the, for the for Cambridge University, they set up a um, a research unit funded by the Medical Research Council to develop some particular. Uh, well, what he was working on at that time was um, artificial vision. Really. So, um, and they had some very significant. They had some. Success in doing that, um, yes. but it was maybe it was a bit before its time. I, th I think I have an impression that now that area has gone much further. But uh -huh. maybe um, maybe some of the technology wasn't quite quite there at that time. Available, that, yeah. that was what they were working on. But also other other perhaps less ambitious um, things. But basically, where you. You, um, you stimulate the nervous system artificially to yes, re yes, re yes. replace some damaged. Did he bring any of those questions or interest home? Uh, oh yeah, of the work he was talking he was, about. He what, was always talking what, about what, what he was struggling with. It. Really? He, so he shared what? that with his children? Oh yeah, yes. Where did you move as a family? We moved to Kent. Just, yes. Um, Near to a town called Sevenoaks, which is a, a commuter town about 20 miles south of London. Down. And that's where, um, obviously, you enter a new school, mm -hmm. both geographically and in terms of age. You're at what age, roughly, at this point? I was 12. 12. After, yeah. It's a very important age for transition. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what was the school you went to? At I went to a school. Yeah, a, a school called Seven Oaks School, which was Seven Oaks a, School. Yes, yeah, it was slightly. It was one of these slightly anomalous things that exist in the British system. It, it was a, a, a private school. Yes, but since there was no local grammar school, was there? Yeah, a sort of a high level a secondary school for a state secondary school for more academically strong people. The, the state paid for people, so half of the pupils were actually supported by the but, state, by the state, and half of them were private. Um, In a social sense, that probably sorry, could was, be very it was, beneficial. It was, yes, it, it was not. It had a broader 
social mix than right. one might think in. And a, a range of intellectual interests or any sorts of specialties at the school? I mean, you were all headed in an academic direction, yes. I understand that, but... Uh, well, it was known, it was... Um, it had a reputation then as being quite innovative. There were lots of, a lot of then trendy theories in education that were they took up there. Right. Um, and this is so now when? We're in the early 60s, mid 60s? This is about 1970. 70, yeah. all right. Yeah, so. Um, actually, I didn't, I didn't completely like it to begin with. It took, me, it took me some years to kind of settle into the school. And yes. get, was get, it just the natural business of an adolescent in a new area, or was it the approach that you weren't enjoying that they, they seemed to take? Uh, a bit of both. I'd, I'd sort of grown up thinking that I had a kind of a, a path in the, the, the schools in Cambridge that I was going to follow, yes, but then this yes. was different and it wasn't. But, um, but actually the disruption was probably quite Hmm. Quite good for me. But, so it, it, but, it suited you, but you didn't think so yet. No, I didn't. Uh, for, the, for, a, for a time, I was not especially happy. There, but, right. But, uh, but um, I, I, having read uh, about your, your some, somewhat about your life, I, I know that your hobbies and side interests are going to be perhaps as important as uh, the formal studies. I know you're quite interested in boats. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about that and where that fits into your growing interests? Now that was very important because that was really my passion all, all through this time. So, um, so that's really what we should be talking about, you and boats. Well, that was at this point. That's right. Yes. So let's so talk that, about it. So at that point in my life, I was, I wanted to, to grow up and be a, a designer of yachts. That was that's oh, how I. Okay. And I was. Um, but actually, going, going back to the school, yes, it yes. was it was fortunate that in fact sailing was a big thing in this school. It was ah, one of the so most, in fact the so, two were compatible. So actually, through the through the sailing, I I I grew very happy in the school, sort of ah, in a okay in a short while. But that's but um, no good to no, have stumbled on that. But what are the elements, either in sailing or in the contemplation of a career, that were encouraging you in certain directions? What, what did you know, perhaps from your engineer father, that you had better understand in order to perhaps one, one day wind up designing yachts? Uh, yes, that was quite important because I was, right, so I would design these yachts and none of them were ever constructed, of course, but I, but I was quite serious about it. I mean, I, 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 I had books about the calculations you must do and all the things you must think of. Um, so that... Um, and you must have yeah. seen within yourself the talent that might actually lead to that kind of a career. So it's not just the, the will to do this. Uh, numbers may be coming into it. Are you, are you beginning to feel quite, quite comfortable in the world of numbers? Well, I became intrigued by it. That was the, because part, part, partly through this, because I wanted to learn about. There was more mathematics involved in these things than I'd learned at school. So I learned some some sort of things in advance to some right. extent. And um, yeah, and and my father my father showed me some mathematical techniques, and I was so I was. You know, using describing curves by what's called um, um, the superposition of sine waves. So, yes. So, just a, uh, so, so I was I was intrigued by all that. And uh, um, um, maybe it's rude of me, but I'm also interested in your talent as well as your interest. So, are are you are you finding yourself quick with these things? Are you beginning to see imaginative problems in the context of 
of ship design and so forth that are drawing you in one way or the other? It doesn't have to be so. I'm just curious yeah. um, whether that was happening at the same time. Well, it was, that was, it was all about this time you know, that I became more interested in mathematics. But part, partly was this line from the, the yacht design and partly from, well, just I found it, so maybe a number of things. Well, one, I just found it very interesting and yes. sort of beautiful. Another, it, it fitted in with what I was capable of doing in the sense that most of my family would be doing more projects that actually you built, you built something. You know, they, they, would, ah. they would make a boat or make an aeroplane or something. Yes, exactly. But I, I somehow never really got on very well with actually making a <laughs> physical things. But it, I could make things, in, not physical things, but I could yeah. make, make, make things that existed sort of in the realm of ideas. So we're meeting the young theorist. Sorry? We're meeting the young theorist in a way. Yes, I mean, so I, or, or at least it was something, they were things that, they were like projects, but they were not practical projects. Yes, that's they were quite, in, you know, quite I, to projects the point. Projects of the mind. So I, the somehow I found that particularly congenial. Yeah. So the, 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 the practical results was, was not the beauty you, you were looking for. Yeah. Uh, it was the beauty itself of the, the concept. Well, just... Maybe the beauty would not be at that stage quite the right. Uh-huh, please. It was just intriguing. I just wanted to, you know, I wanted to learn calculus. Right. When I heard about it you know, some years before it would have been covered in school, right. I, I wanted to... The only Don't, reason I'm, I'm uh, pressing and genuinely uh, out of interest is because I find among the mathematicians I've had the uh, pleasure of meeting and talking in this, mm. uh, within this context that so often the word beautiful comes up yes. or elegant. Well, that was, right, that was, definitely that's a very important thing, but it, meant, it probably wasn't what was Quite at yet. the front of my mind. Yes. Then. So there's something else I should mention. Yes, please. Which maybe I should have mentioned before, when we were talking, even back at the days of Cambridge, yes. is my um, my grandfather, please, my my mother's father, yes, who was a. He wasn't a mathematician at all, but he he was a retired schoolmaster. Yes, but he was. Well, he was extraordinarily keen on. How do I explain? Uh, let's say, he, he, he took a huge interest in my development and so he would give me many, many books he yes. would, he would um, give me of, of all kinds, but in particular, coming to the stage that we're talking about now, he would give me, he would go down to the bookshop in Cambridge and buy some suitable mass books. Which right. Sent to him. So he was still, some of them are still in these shelves. That, really, really, so that, that he gave another, you. That was another another so the, my, I might have had some interest but it might have stayed dormant if yes. it hadn't been that there was a, a book that was yes you know, developed it so in a way when I was looking at your mother or your father I should have been looking at your grandfather for that he was well intellectual he was a, he was a very somehow he took a he took a special interest in he me, took a special yeah. in you uh, as well, in all his grandchildren, but all his probably particularly, all right. in, I, no, it's not right. what I said, probably particularly in, in me. Well, now that you're in a good school, um, and with academic intentions and a curiosity that's going to actually serve you well mm -hmm. later on, um, can I find a mentor uh, among the teachers in this school for you to carry you forth, or I, I suppose I'm really wondering whether you're completely what, at least in America, we call a self-starter, or whether you're having a nurturing intellectual environment along the way. Um, uh, there, was, there was some very you know, excellent mathematics teachers in the, the school who took, there were. who um, 
yeah, they did take a special interest in me, but I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't quite say that they were, as they were, they were maybe nurturing would be the word. Rather. All right, they weren't the the seed, but right, they were right, yeah. they were nurturing, which is was helpful for you as you yeah. progressed. Mm -hmm. There's there are formal structures in education where at a certain point somebody decides whether you go on to university. I suppose that was expected in your case, yeah. but you're going on. But where do you go? And what are you likely to specialize in? So let's have that conversation, return to the conversation in your last years when um, decisions are being made with you and for you and yeah. by you uh, as to what would be next. How are you deciding where to go for your next uh, from academic? A, from the time I was about 14, I, I, um, I gave up the idea of being a yacht designer and I decided okay. I wanted to be a a mathematician. And you would have said that to yourself, I'm going to be a mathematician. Um, like I said, I, I'm, try, I'm going to try to be, but in the sense that it was presented to me, well, the, the picture one had, at least at that time, would be, that was something like saying, I'm going to be a concert pianist or something, which but, but lots of people might want to do it. But right. But only the fewer called, yes. Few, but I mean, in reality, it's not quite like that. <laughs> um, but you know, that was that was how I thought about it at that time. Right. This, this was some very desirable thing to to try to do. But right. I mean, I, I, mean, I had a plan B. Was I'll go and be an accountant or something? <laughs> something yes. Something, yes. something um, like something of that. Maybe kind. not as demanding a form of working with numbers, that sort of thing. Well, some, uh, I mean, that's, I, that, think, I think an accountant is just a, a, some more standard professional career that. Yeah, that, understood, yeah, understood. So. But in order to at least have the shot, as they say, of, of being a mathematician, yeah. you're going to have to go to a good department, yes. a good university. Um, is that pretty much prescribed by faith that it be Cambridge? Uh, since that was so important to your parents and you had lived there. Yeah, I mean, we never really considered because Cambridge. Well, for one thing, it was most of my family went to Cambridge from it. Mean, yes. My, so uh, so and we been so and also, but particularly in mathematics, it was. It has this long tradition as being the right. the main certainly center. in the Oxbridge context. Cambridge yeah, had I mean, a I mean, in reality, Oxford would have been just as good, but it wasn't. It wasn't the family. It didn't. It didn't. Well, it didn't. But also, it didn't have the. In the general reputation, as okay. it, were, it was like fair enough. It was like the, how decisions were made. The place you would. Yeah. Um, was it necessary to apply in a particular field, or were you given some time to roam at Cambridge before you said, "Well"? This is the the faculty I'll spend. Are you already a, a confirmed aspirant in mathematics? So you are going to Cambridge in order to read mathematics. Oh yes, it would have been you put have that to, way. Yeah, the system in Britain is you have to you have to designate the, the, uh, the field. But there's also quite you know quite a big element in that time is there's a kind of a competitive tradition. So that there were. Okay. There were there were scholarships to Oxford and Cambridge at that time, which uh, they were not worth very much. I mean, they, they, financially, they were not very much, but they were. But you were a scholar of yeah, that, and it that was, was like getting the so. The way of being celebrated as a potential scholar in well, that field. I mean, it was not. Outside this small world, probably no one would notice. But right. I think in the in the in world, of, world in the world of people at schools applying right. to Oxford and Cambridge, this was like a big. It, it, and did you get a scholarship? In the end, yes. But I mean, it was it was. Um, the point I'm trying to make is that there was there's an element in mathematics just of competition, shall we say? Of, yes, of, yes. Of being the yes the smartest, quickest person. Yes, so, yes, yes. Which is not. Well, and at that particular period, this was this kind of significant right. thing. 
Yeah. Well, also, in Cambridge as well, to some extent, there was a sort of a, a competition to be the top. Yes. Um, and you know, did you notice that sense. in yourself? Sorry? Did you notice that in yourself? That and not, but a no, 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 I never was the top. I, I was never. Uh, it was. It was a competition that I was would enter, but I was never really the. I, I always did reasonably in these kind of competitive things, but not. I was never the, the top, no. the top no. fellow. I, I actually read in one of the accounts of you, one of your, um, you know, the world in time is going to be very astonished by what you can do. But in retrospect, those who had known you at Cambridge, or maybe one or two who had taught you, said things like, um, he wasn't the top one. He, he wasn't the one I would have had my eye on for this kind of achievement. So you were able, you were present, uh, you were certainly um, developing as a mathematician, but you weren't the one they were betting on, so to speak. Right. I mean, yeah. I'm just putting it in this way. Well, no, no doubt the conception was different, yeah. but uh, yeah. people didn't know what you had in you. Let's, can we put it that way? Yeah. Uh, and perhaps you didn't. Uh, but you're doing well. I mean, you're, you're doing well in, at Cambridge. Uh, you're doing significantly well, sufficiently well, in order to then go to graduate work. Yeah. So let's put you at the cusp of that, the end of that Canterbridgean period, unless there's something that happened in mathematics, in your study of mathematics, that's important to, uh, to note at this point. Before, before you're deciding about graduate school, was there? A, so I, I don't. Was there a, 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 was there a, a project, a, a ah, task, a, yeah. again well, I, a mentor, yes. a way of okay. finding um, direction? I, I became intrigued by the by the branch of mathematics called geometry, which is yes. m maybe a bit distant from what most people might think of as... And I, I'd like but, to, I know uh, but, it's not Euclidean, but so, tell me, so, um, what, what is geometry first, to you at this point? Um, that's quite hard to pin down. Um, mm -hmm. Fair enough. But it's, it, It it, it, it it does involve uh, working with ideas in a visual way, even if they're very somewhat abstract ideas. And um, so, uh, well, actually, that says, yeah, that says a lot. Yeah, that says a lot. So it's at the core of many things you will do in the future. So this overlap of the visual yes. worked with theoretically. Yeah. Um, you're beginning to fee get a feel for at this yeah. point. So I became, so actually it was in the Cambridge course of that time, there was almost nothing about geometry. I mean, it was, um, but there was, there was one small course and there were various, also through the, um, through the applied mathematics, through the courses in relativity and things yeah. like, so I, I, um, Somehow I just felt this was also the fact the the fact that it was not really taught somehow added to the intrigue. It was like yes. it was a secret, no, I see a that. secret subject. To, no, I see that. And uncover. also, also possibly, and again, I'm making guesses about your temperament. Uh, you're the expert in that. Um, that that intrigues you, uh, but also. It's almost a challenge in the sense that, as I see it, in the sense that it's not really quite respected. I mean, it's, it's not considered important anymore, or maybe it belongs to the past, not to the present and the future. Is that fair to say in, in the world around you that you're, as, as geometry is thought about and so forth? It's in the, I don't quite, in the world around me at that time in Cambridge. Yes, yes, yes but it was just not a, world. it was just not a 
it's probably just not something people knew about, really. I mean, um, to a large well, but you, but you pursued it. I mean, yeah. clearly, where I'm going with this, because your great achievement and continuous achievement has been to not listen to assumptions about whether something was important or still had validity or could be done. Yes, uh, it's, it feels like a bit of the secret of of how you progress, and so this the, the notion that geometry was not particularly. Yes. featured or favored uh, among, among mathematicians then yeah. seems to have been important in your development. Yeah, it was, yes. To some, I mean, I'm a great I mean, believer I mean, uh, right. in temperament. As I subsequently, well, as I soon found out, just yes. down the road in Oxford, yes. there were lots of people who did exactly right. that. But, it but was, where you was, were. But that where was, you that were. Was yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and in fact, in Cambridge, as I touched on, there were people around, more around Stephen Hawking, yes. who were doing, in a sense, the same kind of thing, but from a, an applied, yes, applied from indeed. an applied direction. And so that and uh, that was maybe part of, the, so part of, all this was that, in Cambridge, the mathematics is divided into, pure and applied. Okay. And so, I sort of decided I was going to be pure, but then a lot of a lot of a lot of activity was sort of I was not was aware of the of applied would have, yes would have, yeah. but this this was not true of Oxford uh, which you'll go to very soon uh, they did not make this as severe a distinction between applied and theoretical no it's all in it's more unified that was the more traditional um, to get you to Oxford what will it take? Will you have to do an undergraduate thesis? I mean, what what is again the 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 formal progress of of your mathematical training? Well, I just I, mean, I applied mm -hmm. to do a, a PhD. Well, yes, that's called the DPhil in Oxford, and um, I done these exams in um, Cambridge, and they. You did all right. I did all right. <laughs> yeah. Actually, there was someone. There was someone in Cambridge who was in a way important to me. Okay, um, please. Who was called? Well, there were, there were several, but a person that comes to my mind now is someone called Adams, Frank Adams, mm -hmm. who um, I mean, he was not. He was a topologist, really. So not really, but he. Anyway, he. I somehow managed to impress him, mm -hmm. and he wrote to. I think he. He was one of my. References for Oxford, right, I, which is everything. I think, I think really. that convinced them. And, I, and he, he, must he wrote, have, please. He was, very, he was, he was a very kind. He had a sort of um, yeah, so off, 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 after one of my exams in Cambridge, Adams wrote to me saying I was the one of the examiners, and I want to congratulate you on what you. Ah. What you wrote in these exams, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for instance, which is not which is kind and yes. unusual, yeah. uh, kind to do that, um, but important to think that in terms of being a sponsor of your yes. your future in a way. So the thing was, I didn't just answer the questions All to right, kind please. of get the maximum marks in the least time, but I had my own way of doing things your own in many cases. Doing or some yeah, I think we're sensing that. Yeah. Um, I think that's what he. There's, a, there's a, in, in the context of your way of doing things, and one of the things that, and we'll of course talk about your great insight and when it happens, your first great insight. But that being said, I, I notice in you something which is, one could call modern or postmodern, as one mm -hmm. chooses, which is the uh, the, the lack of interest in the relationship of various categories that are normally kept apart. I mean, I, I suppose we can say particularly so here in the case of physics and mathematics. It's not that they're kept apart, but they're assumed to have different natures and so forth. And you don't seem um, to be, by t temperament or inclination, um, interested in the givens of category. Is that fair to say? I mean, that, well, that's that and that's that. And yeah, I think that'd be reasonable to say. Yeah. It's, it is reasonable particular, to say. Yeah. And it's, it's clearly apparent already as a Cambridge undergraduate, um, this, yeah. this tendency, 
which has been picked up by um, by your professor. Well, in you fact, get in. In fact, it tends going. Maybe we're getting a bit. Please going going to later time. That maybe in most of my work, I sort of tend to know. I just know a little about a number of things rather than being a, a great expert in any particular thing. So I tend to, by, by um, bringing together different. Well, as a cultural kinds of historian, I think that that has to have been very significant in a lot of your achievement because in, it was really the, the 20th century, the earlier 20th century, that was captured by specialization almost to the point of losing the possibility of insights mm -hmm. because of those little prisons of specialty. Yes. And it would be exactly your generation, and I would argue your temperament, that took us to the next stage because that neat categorization yes. hasn't been the basis for some of the great insights mm. that we're now working with. So it seems to me you have the temperament and perhaps even the moment in time where people are going to begin to listen to another way of thinking. You're at Oxford. Um, again, if I press too much on this, it's the cultural historian in me, but the, the spirit of Oxford's mathematical culture when you get there, we, we've already gotten the sense that it's not split very neatly into the theoretical mm -hmm. um, and the applied. But I think you, you've praised the atmosphere you entered there, the, the nature of Oxford mathematical culture. Can you talk a little bit about um, your discovery of it and how it affected you? Yeah. yeah um, I think it, it was, maybe one should say it's somewhat Oxford in itself, it was because of already two remote, um, Atiyah and Penrose yes. were both there. And so yes. it was um, the, the culture had developed around, the, the activity and culture developed around them that was oh, the, well, the crucial thing. So describe it, that. It, 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 it was in Oxford, but it was. It, yeah, it's okay, Oxford, it was, fair enough. Um, um, we'll give credit where credit is due. Yes. But what was that culture in a way? What, how did that affect the way you were thinking as a graduate student? Um, well, it was part of a, as you mentioned about the kind of historical moment. <coughs> okay, so one thing is that they're both remarkable people. Yes. Or, or, or not. And also, a picture a tear was a very charismatic um, mm. person who could have he would have. He would have been the top of any area he wanted to go to. That kind of person. But, um, but it was also there was a kind of a a wider movement in that time in mathematics. Were partly, in general, um, as you were saying, with less division into compartments, but also specifically. Um, in extending the connection with, with between geometry and physics, that was so. Uh, that was <coughs> um, that, that was a much more general thing going on, not just a, a general intellectual movement going on in the world. But in, in particular, Oxford was the kind of the centre for that, mm -hmm. um, and this suited you. Yes, based no, on was, the kinds was, of interests. Yes, it was, that, yes, exactly. That exactly, you had. Um, um, the right thing. Would you have said at that point that you were? It's not the word, right word, but I'm going to use it anyway. Competent in equally in physics and some of its interests and directions and what it could teach, and mathematics, or were you sort of weak in one and the other? I mean, you you, you will work together with them. But I'm just wondering, um, where did the physics come into it? Yeah, I, I, I had then, and I have now quite 
very limited technical knowledge of advanced physics. I, okay. I, I, mean, I, I, I had a good background in more classical physics from but um, I'm relatively good, but um, I, I essentially had no or very little technical knowledge at the, on the front line of theoretical yes, physics. Okay. But, um, <clears throat> but it was more that certain, certain ideas and questions arose in physics, which could then be understood in as, mathematical, as mathematical terms. Questions. So it was the um, lack of technical knowledge of physics was not a, was not a major barrier. It yeah, might even have been time. an advantage. Although it would have been obviously better to have. Um, <clears throat> At some level, but also you're also not bound. Yes. In some yes, ways. Some... So you can take from it what you need, mm -hmm. so to speak. I remember someone telling me at that time, um, uh, right, something like, don't, don't try to learn quantum field theory until you have a tenure job. <laughs> something, something. Yeah. And this is a, a big, so, um, yeah, so that was maybe that. Like, so to, it's, to, to, to learn, to, to, to really understand things in a significant way would have right. been a, a large distraction. A disadvantage, which is yeah. wonderfully ironical. Um, that being said, I know it's formally initially Hitchin who is mm -hmm. your your formal director. Or, yes. Uh, yes, that's right. So I, yeah. I went to work with Nigel. Yeah. Right. For the, um, um, is it he who suggests a direction for your dissertation? Yes. And how was that articulated to you as a problem um, to be solved or that, might, that you might take on? Oh, he, he, he explained a, a problem or a conjecture which he'd come yes. to, um, sort of growing out of well, this, this area of interaction, in particular the work he'd done a few years before with, with Atiyah. But, but well, I don't think he really meant me to work on the conjecture in general. He, he, really? Um, um, what he suggested to do was I, I check some kind of construction for a special case. Actually, so he, uh -huh. he, ne he never really said, huh. "This is your project." But I, um, but nevertheless, that's what I. I started trying to solve this conjecture in a general that he way. presented to you, but. Um, I, I should say, Nigel was, I mean, I, I didn't meet Atiyah for the first year I was in Oxford yes. at all. Yes. Um, so Nigel was important. Um, so you're at work on this conjecture. Yes. Um, the, and the, um, the thing there was that, <clears throat> right, so there were all these geometers in Oxford, yeah. but they didn't do analysis and they didn't, if that's the kind of, Things connected with partial differential equations and things. Right. Um, so that was, well, I'm exaggerating, of course, but they, so <clears throat> there was a kind of a gap there intellectually in that there was a particularly sort of non linear partial differential equation. Yes. That was not something that, was, but I somehow, partly because I had a lot of analysis in Cambridge, so I was, and that, Partly because that's something I find congenial. I, right, I that's a good sort of, word. I yeah. sort of embarked on solving this problem using techniques of analysis and right. partial differential equations. Uh, mm. The uh, the person I'm in, so intrigued by, the scientist, the, the mathematician, is the fellow who is proceeding down a path and will eventually come up with um, an insight mm -hmm. that will astonish the profession. I mean, you won't be so modest as to, de to deny that. I mean, when in the end you produce your insight, uh, that perhaps somebody so young did it is the least of it. What was remarkable is it, it ups, didn't upset, it overturned 
fundamental assumptions. Yes. And uh, maybe there's no way for you, least of all, least of everyone, to, to answer how you did that or why you did that or why you didn't stop in this path and say, well, I won't proceed there because it doesn't make sense or, you know. Well, I, I could answer, I mean, I, 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 I know quite clearly why. why okay, I, I, I'm excellent, the excellent, um, I'm delighted. But, I mean, but it's nothing, there's nothing very, uh, it, it was entirely accidental, you could say, but, oh, but, please, but, but please. due to, <clears throat> so I was I was st struggling to understand the um, the sort of techniques from partial differential equations yes. and things like that, which is not <clears throat> not something I had any kind of. What, but I I had to learn it for myself. You know, I didn't, there wasn't any real training in that. Um, so. Well, in general, uh, in trying to understand something, a way is to do kind of thought experiments. You say, you know, if this is true, then what would be the consequences and see right. where it leads us. So I was, I was sort of doing that. I had this idea about how these <coughs> solutions to this equation could behave. Mm -hmm. And then that gave me this picture. And then, um, so there, be, there was, you have a, this equation would give you a space parameterizing all the solutions. And so I was looking at the properties of this space. Right. <clears throat> and then sort of, I just, well, I, I just saw, but in a sense it's not a difficult, let's see, from another direction, <clears throat> on the side of topology, yes. once you have such a space, there are basic things you, that has leads to basic Consequences. So I put this to consequences together, and then it transpired that that would be some new information about the what you call the manifolds that you're you're studying, the four-dimensional manifolds. Mm -hmm. So, so it was it was not. I was not starting off thinking I want to get information great. about four. That was not. I had no. I, I mean, I, I didn't even knew that. I didn't even know that this information was new. Um, really? Yeah. Oh, that's very I, I thought, at one time I thought that it would be some sort of interesting new approach to some well-known thing about four manifolds. Or, yes. Um, but I had, a, I had a colleague who we shared, I shared an office with, who called Mike Hopkins, who's, who's now a very distinguished topologist. But anyway, he, he filled me in on some crucial information about that point at that time. So okay. off, but in one way or another, I realized that this information would be kind of important new information. For, for so many. basically, <coughs> again, I'm just saying it in a certain way just to, uh, to get a response, but the truths revealed themselves. It's not that you set out and said, well, now this is a direction and that you knew the implications of that journey you just proceeded. Yes. Well, once, once the first, yeah, so if we go back to the first thing, so the point was that there were, it, it depended upon having these interests, both in, or some interests and knowledge, both of the, the partial interest equations, but also of, the topology, the topology right. well, which I, I, I happen to have through my, so actually maybe the, the Cambridge background is was rather good there because although we hadn't learned this geometry in a formal way, we had learned these yeah. other things. So. Mm -hmm. um, so with those two things, anyone could in a sense see that you got information from this space, but probably in reality, not many people there were not many people who would have all that combination Grand, of exactly. background. Yeah. <clears throat> but once, once, um, once I had this basic observation that it was well, clear that one should go full steam ahead to develop <clears throat> into a much bigger, a much bigger theory of how these 
these spaces could give information about four dimensional manifolds. Was there, we don't have much more time, but we're, we're on the central point and goal of this interview, which is exactly that process of inquiry. Mm -hmm. um, is there a eureka moment in, at that time in the creation of the thesis and some sense of what you had begun to see and how it might have a significant effect um, in mathematical inquiry? Or do you not know well, until wasn't everybody a, There wasn't you. quite a single moment, as I said, because the eureka moment would be when I thought, oh, I found a, I found a, I found a beautiful formula about something. <laughs> but, yes. but maybe it's, I don't quite know what it's good for. I mean, I, maybe it's something that's already known, or I yes. don't quite know. But you know and something new has I knew it's something. I knew it's something beautiful formula. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but, yes. But, but, but then it took maybe a month or so to find out what it was good for, potentially, because yes. at this stage, this was all kind of thought experiment saying, if this was true, then this would be. So right, then right. there was a lot of hard work in filling in all the, the proofs and the, the, the details. Right. Yes, yeah. it's the hard work yeah. of, of inquiry, yeah. uh, formal inquiry. Yes. Um, <coughs> was there and sort of end with this salute. Uh, so you presented it to clearly, the, all along you've probably been having chats with Hitchin and Atia uh, as you're proceeding. And are they manifesting excitement? Um, yes, well, let's see. So I've been, for my first year in Oxford, I was working with Hitchin. 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 But then he suggested I move to a tier. He suggested, I see. That, um, well, well, between them, they suggested. So, yeah, yeah. So I, but, but then it was about, I think it was about a month after I'd started seeing a tier regularly that yeah. I came along and said, look, we've got this, this formula. <laughs> right. And then. Yeah, yeah, he, he was ex yes, that, he was excited. Yes, uh, that. it's quite important actually when somebody <laughs> you respect says, "My God, <laughs> you're you're yes. you're in in a very interesting going in a very interesting direction." Uh, yes, because we don't have the time. I wish we had. I do want to ask what seems to me implicit in the rest of your career, which is up till now, which has been quite rich and respected and uh, good positions in good faculties and so mm -hmm. forth. Um, is it fair to say at this point, and you're still a young scholar in mm -hmm. what, what, you will, what you will achieve, um, that you're still working within the framework of that insight uh, that happened in, uh, in, in the course of that significant dissertation, and or the paper that you then wrote afterward? It would, be, it would be reasonable to say, if it's very broadly interpreted, in, in the following way, that in the, I'm still working in, you know, somewhere in between these partial differential equations approaches and more topological ideas and geometry and all these different things. So, uh, although the precise things in that mix that I've worked on have evolved over the years and gone back. So that's one way it's fair to say. Another is that, um, yeah, so from that time in 1980, early 1980s, we suddenly discovered a lot more about these four-dimensional manifolds. Well, for the, I mean, for roughly for 10 years after that, there was a kind mm -hmm. of explosion of knowledge. But then that reached a, you know, sort of reached a barrier, that, that line, not, not exhausted, but you know, the, 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 the pace of discovery slowed down. So not, there hasn't been much radically new done. So, so I still, and there are 
fundamental questions that we don't, we just they seem inaccessible, we have no real way of attacking. So I would still really like to be attacking these questions. I still think about them that, again, because, because they're not really accessible, I've sort of gone off to work around, work on other things around them, but somehow they're still the center of my interest in some way. If, I, if you say, what, what do I really want to understand? It would be these yes. questions about four dimensional manifolds and not, not just the answer to the questions, but also why there are these connections with equations coming from physics and things like that. And, so what is the and you're certainly not alone now in that, in that universe of inquiry. Oh no, I mean, oh no. That was no, the, this whole area, uh, the breakthrough physics, this whole area has, um, in, a very, in a broader sense of the interactions between these different fields has, has thrived. And, and the younger, for the younger people, so they, the, they have again much broader. There are, there are younger people who have you know, a deep understanding of yes. quantum field theory and things combined with. Um, they may not even mathematical techniques. realize now how revolutionary a concept it was. Now that it is part of the discourse. I mean, that's, I, I, that's, yes. That's probably it's fair to say. Yes, a lot, tend to, yeah. Well, I'd like that's that to be the last words. Thank okay. you very much. <laughs>